Hey there guys, welcome back. Hope you're all doing well. This is Chetan here from DoubleCube and welcome back to a brand new tutorial. And I am really excited to make this tutorial for you guys because today we're gonna to be learning logo designing the professional way, uh, you know, for a beginner, uh, you know, the correct way. Uh, so logo design is actually a little bit new for me because uh, I actually was never doing logo designing and I pretty started recently back, I think a month or two months back. And I also did a lot of learning and research and I'm actually at a pretty good stage now. So if you guys wanna check out my portfolio, is down in the description uh, the link to that is on the behance page on the description so in the description so you go ahead and check it out if you guys are interested and uh, so logo designing now i'm going to be teaching you logo designing il illustrator but you can also do logo designing in photoshop if you guys are interested if you guys are more comfortable with photoshop but obviously a uh, logo designing in photoshop is not pretty much suited because of a lot of drawbacks um which i'll explain further on in the video now but if you guys are interested to learn logo designing in photoshop i suggest you to go to the link in the description and follow this tutorial by Big E. He's an amazing graphics uh, graphics designer, and um, you can follow him on Twitter. You can subscribe to his YouTube channel, and he uploads a lot of tutorials, a lot of videos, a lot of speed art. So uh, go ahead and uh, check it out if you guys want to learn it in Photoshop. But if you guys are, want to learn it in Illustrator, this is the right place. So why Illustrator? Now Illustrator, so software like Illustrator, Coral Draw, and uh, these softwares are you know basically based on vector images. So vector is basically paths which can be used and the basic objective is to, to use vector uh, in my opinion is so that it can be scaled to a very big size without pixelation. Now, if you go ahead and make something in Photoshop and you want to expand it, it's going to end up pixelating. So if you want to, so if you want to make a small logo and then you want to use it on an apparel or on a big billboard or a banner or a print ad, you, you have to scale up the logo which is going to end up pixelating. But if you use a vector object, then that's gonna solve your problem and you can go ahead and scale it down or scale it up, whatever you want, and it's not gonna pixelate. And the Photoshop is more of, you know, post-production of the uh, image, uh, I'm sorry, post-production of the logo and uh, Illustrator is just for creation of the logo, uh, you know, and uh, that's the best tool to create crisp, professional, precise, specific, uh, you know, uh, to the point perfect logos a lot of options and tools and functions available in illustrator to use it so i'm going to be using illustrator uh, cc which is the latest version and i actually suggest everybody to download illustrator cc because it has a lot of new features and makes your life extremely easy than the cs6 version um, so you guys can go ahead and purchase it if you want if you don't have that if you don't want to purchase it i'm quite sure there are a lot of sources where you can get them for free without purchasing but uh, I'm not going to be talking about that because that's not what this tutorial is about. So, uh, so, so how you want to start off the logo design process is you want to go ahead and start off with a sketch. So if you are using a digital tablet, you can go ahead and you know draw it on the digital tablet. Or if you don't have one, which I don't, uh, just like me, you can go ahead and grab a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil and just go ahead and sketch it. So I'm actually go so actually I'm going to be doing the letter I as you can see as you could have seen on the thumbnail of the of the video. And it's going to look similar to that, so um, I'm going to go ahead and start off with the tutorial right now. So I'm going to start off by going to File and choosing New. And uh, for my logo designs, I usually choose the dimensions of uh, 1000 by 1000 pixels. So I'm just going to put that on, so that's going to be 1000 by 1000. And I'm going to choose uh, pixels, right? And I'm going to just click on OK. And that's going to give us this white big canvas over here, guys. I'm just going to go ahead and quickly save this. Right, so now that's saved, I'm gonna go ahead and drag in my reference picture as uh, I, I mentioned earlier in the video. So I'm gonna go out of my screen and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna place it right over here. And as you can see, this is a pretty big canvas. I'm just gonna go ahead and shrink it down and I'm gonna press Control minus on the keyboard to uh, you know zoom out. Uh, and if you're using the mouse, you can hold on Alt and do the same thing. And then I'm gonna come to the corner over here and I'm gonna hold on Shift and Alt and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring it down over here. I'm going to press Ctrl-0 to fit to the screen and we're going to have something like this. Now I'm going to move this until I find the center. Now, as you can see, we have these white lines that are going to be helping me out and uh, that's the center basically. Um, but I actually don't think that's the center. Uh, maybe, yeah, somewhere over here. Doesn't matter actually. So, so if you want to get this smart guys, what you want to do is you want to go to window and I'm sorry, you want to go to view and click on smart guides and that's going to give you those smart guides. Now here in the layers panel, now here I'm going to be using a lot of these features. Now if you don't have these tabs, if you don't have them, you can just go to window and click on whatever they are. 
and I'm using the layers tab that is F7 and I'm gonna go ahead and just click here to the, to lock it up so I can't move or do anything on that. And then I'm gonna press this button over here which is the create new layer and I'm gonna go ahead and draw my lines on this. Now there are two ways to do this. Now you can go ahead and use freehand to do it or the other way is a professional way to be more precise is to use the shapes because they are, because shapes are, you know, default, uh, defaultly proportional and, you know, exact and precise. So I'm going to press control plus to just zoom in a little bit to get some space over here. Control, whoops. Uh, yeah, I think that's good enough. So I'm going to press control R to get my rulers and uh, I'm going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, I'm going to bring, just click over here and I'm going to bring it up over here till, you know, I get something, you know, like that. And I'm just going to vaguely place it and I'm going to cl click over here and bring this one to get this. All right. So uh, that is pretty much okay. That's looking good. And uh, maybe I'm going to bring ahead and bring out one more here. But uh, yeah, okay. That's looking good again. All right. So actually one more. So I need all this set. Perfect. All right. So let's start. So you can go ahead and use the pen tool over here and you can just go ahead and, you know, click and that's going to create a shape layer for you. But uh, I'm going to start off with the basics by using the shape tool. So we have the rectangular tool. Just going to click on that because I want to create a rectangle. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create the top half and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, split it and then do the bottom half. I'm sorry, and duplicate it, turn it around and do the bottom half. Sorry. Yeah, uh, so now here, so how usually you want to do is you have two options, two colors over here. One is the foreground color and one is the stroke color. Now, if I actually go ahead and, uh, oops, sorry about that. If I go ahead and make one, you can actually see that I have a very thin black stroke and a complete white background. If I go ahead and set the stroke to something like six, you can see it actually increases the stroke. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to delete that and make sure you're on the new layer. And we're going to go ahead and just click on this button, which is going to make sure that there is no stroke. And here I'm going to go ahead and double click on it. And I'm going to just select a black color and we're good. So let's just select this tool and I'm going to come here to the corner and it's going to snap. And I'm going to go ahead and just roughly create a rectangle and, uh, you know, like that. Awesome. Now you actually want to see what is be what is below. So I'm going to reduce the opacity. So I'm going to come here to appearance. If you don't have, you can go to window and choose appearance. And I'm going to double click on this opacity and set the opacity down to 50. So now I can see both of the, the layer, the picture, as well as the shape. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press control plus to zoom in a little bit more. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, do some more shaping. So we're going to go ahead and so if you click come over here and just click on this small key, uh, you can select the other versions and I'm going to just click on the ellipse tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here to the center and I'm going to hold down shift and alt and that's going to go ahead and give me a good looking circle. Now I'm going to go ahead and hold down shift and alt and create a pretty big circle because I, oops, sorry about that. Let's try that again. Uh, yeah, so hold down shift and alt and create a pretty big circle because I don't know how much I'm going to be requiring. I'm actually going to go ahead and reduce the opacity of this down to 50. Oops, that was 560. Uh, 50, great. And I'm press control minus to zoom back and uh, yeah, so so I'm so to move things you want to use the uh, the selection tool by pressing V on the keyboard, which is the shortcut. Uh, so that's to move things around. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, pretty much put it over here. Not quite sure. So yeah, I think that is looking good. Uh, maybe I want to shrink it down. So I'm going to just click click on this and hold down Shift, and uh, that's going to shrink it down. Actually, I'm going to hold down Shift on this side. Yeah, and awesome. Let's move this again and uh, hmm. not quite sure why that's happening, but let's see. Uh, all right, a little bit more smaller. Should that work? Yeah, that's that, that's looking great. That's looking great. So if you guys are hearing any background noise, please pardon me. There's, there's some kind of, uh, you know, uh, a fest that's happening near my house, uh, some kind of get together of an apartment. Anyway, I don't know why I said that. But anyways, so we have this circle, which is, you know, almost exactly, you know, uh, you know, meeting the edge over here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and bring another ruler and just bring it down. So, you know, it kind of touches that. All right. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, select this object and we're going to cut, you want to actually cut out, cut out this part. Um, 
cut out the circle because we want to create another circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control C and Control F and that's going to copy and place it exactly in place. Now if I do Control V, you can see it's going to bring it up to the center of the canvas or the center of the screen uh, and that's what we want. So I'm going to just going to press Control C, Control F and we're going to go ahead and bring this down slowly and uh, we want a bigger circle for this so I'm going to hold down Shift and Alt and we want a bigger circle oh damn it shift and alt and uh, we're gonna go ahead and place this down pretty much yeah yeah that is looking perfect guys that is perfect uh maybe we can do a little bit more but uh let's see okay let's try a little bit more let's try to be more precise so hold down shift this time and alt all right and i'm gonna hold down Yep. Yeah. Okay, that is great. That is great. Let's hold on. Shift Alt. Uh, let's... Yeah. Maybe we can go ahead and move this a little bit up so that it kind of snaps into place. Yeah. Does it snap? Uh, mm, yeah, that's okay. We can fix that up later. Uh, all right. Now I'm going to hide the rulers by pressing Control R, and I'm going to hide the rulers by pressing Control Colon. I'm just going to hide the rulers. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to select these two objects, and I'm going to come here to the Pathfinder. And I'm just going to click on here which says minus front and that's going to cut out this part for me and uh, that's actually what we want uh, so that is looking great so now what I'm going to do is I don't want this half so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to click on this click on this and I'm going to click on intersect all right uh, so intersect is going to intersect this part so we want to come over here and choose on minus back oops what's happening uh, let's try that once again uh, we'll select these two and intersect nope ah oh, damn it what's happening uh, divide all right sometimes you're gonna find it difficult to find the right tools so you know the best other way is to use the other pathfinder options so I'm actually gonna go click on this and that's gonna click on divide and that's gonna split each part into a separate layer and I'm gonna once so what actually divide does is once it breaks apart the intersecting paths it's gonna group them into a single object so if you move you're gonna end up moving the whole thing so to ungroup you want to just right click and choose ungroup and then you're gonna click on this and I'm gonna hit delete and uh, we get I'm gonna click on this and hit delete again and great so now I'm gonna select all these three and I'm gonna click on here which says unite and that's gonna create it into a single object now the opacity the, all right so actually I'm gonna hold down shift and move this out I'm gonna select this I'm gonna delete that come back here and uh, bring this close yeah there we go that is uh, that is looking really great so now I'm gonna go ahead and make these uh, you know these edges I mean we're gonna cut out these parts so I'm gonna go ahead and select the rectangular tool and I'm gonna go ahead and make a simple thin rectangle like that and I'm gonna come here to the corner and I'm just gonna rotate it uh, I don't know actually to what size or maybe 45 yeah I think let's go with 45 now I don't know maybe 40 uh, 40 uh, let's so that's minus 5 degrees so it's 10, to 10 degrees I don't know guys I'm just gonna go with a rough number over here and I'm gonna go ahead and place it now as you can see over here the logo is designed in such a way that the gap the size reduces so as you can see over here so I'm actually gonna do it I'm gonna come here and eyeball it and just place it up right over here and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all this and we're gonna come here and we're gonna go ahead and choose trim uh, and then we can go ahead and if we move this oops so we want to go ahead right click ungroup again and then we can move this up so it kind of breaks it up over there and I'm gonna go ahead and come here and do the same over here all right and uh, let's go ahead and trim it again maybe we can go ahead and add a little bit more cuts so okay let's see okay that's a good place so I'm gonna trim it oops you want to select both of them actually and then you want to trim it up uh, right click ungroup great and then we're gonna hold down shift so that you know it comes vertically down all right um, let's see let's see is this good enough uh I'm not quite sure actually uh let's see yeah i think this is fine um hmm let's see uh all right let's do one thing guys okay so i'm gonna so press this button this uh op uh, option which is direct selection tool and that's gonna help me to manipulate the points so what i'm actually gonna do now is i'm gonna select all these points and just hold down shift and uh, select all these points a uh, lot of points points all right and then I'm just gonna go and move this up okay looks like we have a problem so let's just zoom in 
quite a few points missing over here so we're gonna select all those points and uh, hold down shift and move them up oh my god there's another point all right so back again okay so that's looking good that's looking better all right uh maybe a little bit more down uh yeah that's looking great okay so now we can go ahead and whoops we're gonna select this the direct the selection tool so we can select the object and we're gonna come here and just make another cut over here yeah and uh, select this one and just click on this that's gonna trim it and we're gonna hold down oops forgot ungroup and then we can go ahead and select this and bring a little bit more down so yeah so it intersects something like that and you can go ahead and select these two and uh, select this is going to trim it right click and uh, ungroup you can select and delete this and uh, we can go ahead and actually delete this one and now we have this cool looking uh, logo over here if I select all of this and come over here to the appearance and set the opacity to a hundred all right so we have something that looks like this now it might be a little unproportional uh, but uh, I mean it's up to you guys uh, so maybe we can actually go ahead and uh, let's see uh, this is almost half not quite sure if it's almost half so we can go ahead and uh, alright the direct selection tool is just select this point hold down shift select this point and we can oops control so to uh, to redo is to control shift and Z so I'm gonna go ahead and select all these points yep and I'm gonna select this point a little, little bit up okay a little bit up not too much all right uh, yeah I think that is looking better uh, that's looking better let's select this point and a lot of these points over here and bring them down yeah that's looking good uh, we can we can move the whole thing up by two pixels you want to kind of be exactly precise yeah all right this is looking great so let me just hide the bottom layer and now we have a logo that looks like this uh let's see a little bit more up all right that is cool so now i'm gonna go ahead and select all of this and i'm gonna go right click and choose group and uh, that's gonna help me to move everything as a single object and i'm gonna do is i'm gonna press ctrl c ctrl f that's gonna make a copy and i'm gonna right click choose arrange i'm sorry transform and choose a reflect and I'm going to choose vertical. If I click on preview, it's going to show you this. So I'm going to click on horizontal actually. And then uh, click on OK. And I'm going to go ahead and bring this down, bring this down, bring this down. Oops, hold down shift so that you don't move to the left or right side. And right click, arrange, uh, sorry, transform. Uh, we're going to go transform. The hell? Oh, yeah. And choose a reflect. And uh, we're going to go choose on horizontal, vertical this time. And click on OK. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, move this so it perfectly lines up. So the smart guides help you to line them up perfectly. So yeah, almost there. Yeah, that is great. And we can just go and move this up and uh, make sure we have a good the same gap over here. Yep, that is looking amazing, guys. That is looking insane. All right, so now I'm gonna select all of this and choose group. And then what we can do is we can actually move it and center them up. So as you can see, it's centered up. And you can actually go ahead and increase the size. I mean, you can do whatever you want. And if you want to change the color, it's pretty simple. Just select like the object, come over here, and uh, just click on whatever color you want. I'm going to go for a nice blue color, and boom. There we go. We have uh, a nice color. Now, if you want to export it, you want to go to File, and you want to go and choose Save As. Now, if you want to save it as a PDF or an SVG, you can do that. If you want to save, save it as an dot uh, ai file you can go and choose directly save as an ai file or if you want to save it as a png you want to go ahead and click on export and then here in the options you can choose a lot of options flash jpeg macintosh um pcd photoshop uh target sequence tiff text format a lot of crazy options so you can uh, do that um so i think that is pretty much it for this tutorial guys thank you guys so much for watching hope you guys really enjoyed it if you did feel free to mention that in the comment sections down below uh don't forget to subscribe more content if you have any questions or requests mention that in the comment section you can follow me on twitter um i am pretty active and i answer to all the questions so that's pretty much it guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video so till then take care and bye bye